Hey guys, Leif here from APEC Office Technology. Today I'd like to uh, go through the process of how we set up user authentication on the Konica Minolta uh, BISUBs. So um, if you come uh, closer, I'm going to jump straight into the uh, how we set this up. You can see at the moment uh, user authentication is already set up on this uh, device because we've got the uh, the uh, authentication, the login screen displayed already. So, but I'm just going to take you back one step. So, I'll go to the home screen and I'm going to go into utilities and administrator settings. So, in here, this is where we uh, uh, enable user authentication. So, we log in to the admin settings. We're going to click on number four user authentication account track and I'm going to go through the various things that I've already configured uh, on this machine. So first of all we're going to go into the general settings and you can see here that user authentication is turned on. So I'll just click on there as a default user authentication will be turned off so all you need to do is turn that on and hit OK. Another option uh, you or another decision you need to make is this public user access. We can restrict that, which means we're not going to have any public user access on this device, or we can set it on with a login or on without a login. Without login, that means that the machine will, be, will not be displaying the login screen. It will be permanently logged in as a public user, if you, if you like, uh, and normally, if you're setting up this to prevent access, you would restrict the public user. Okay. Uh, those are the two options in there for user authentication. So we're just going to hit OK on that. You don't need to worry about the other settings. The next one we're going to go through is the uh, user authentication settings. And go into number one here. There's a ad there's a few admin settings that we can uh, configure. The top one is the username list. You can have that on or off. That's basically just showing a list of users in case uh, that's required. Just on or off. The default function permission. I'll just go in there, but I'll show you these are the default settings, which means that the default user will have full access to everything. But that can be restricted further in here for copying, scanning and faxing, printing and so on. You can restrict it uh, according to all those uh, levels there. Uh, and uh, this next one, ID and print settings. So ID and print is a bit similar to, you might uh, recognize that as a print release. So, uh, and uh, that's off by default, but we can turn that on. And with the public user, we can print uh, have it printing immediately. So I'll leave those settings as I've got them there and hit OK to there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is the uh, user registration in the same menu. This is where we set up new users on the system. I've already got a few in here but I'm going to show you how we set up a new user. So I'm just going to pick the next available one. I'm going to edit and I'm going to go and give that a, a username, which might be, uh, I'll just call him Peter, and hit OK. I can make up a password for him as well, which is, uh, I'll just do four number ones, one, two, three, four, so four ones is the password. It's something simple to remember in this case. And I'm also going to put in an email address for him. Peter at let's see dot com au. I'll show you why this is necessary later on. So put the email in. And if you happen to have uh, cards for authentication as well, uh, a card like this one here, I'm going to show you how to register that next. So we go into register authentication info. Click on there. Uh, at the top here it says register or delete authentication information. So I'm going to click on edit. 
place the IC card on the authentication device. So I'm going to put that there so it's reading it and then I'm going to select OK on the screen while I'm holding the card uh, on the reader. So registration is now complete and I can hit close and close and uh, just a note here on I could also set other permissions for that particular user what level of uh, permissions or what level of authentication is uh, required and when I'm happy with that I'll hit OK and that's it so now that uh, now we've created a new user and I'm gonna go right out of there and just before we finish here, I'm going to show you there's a couple of other options you need to be aware of. One is uh, this one here, user common settings. I find this one here with the confirmation screen, it's handy to turn that off because it's a little bit annoying uh, to have that extra confirmation when logging out. And scan to home is a very nice function to use with uh, user authentication. and that's disabled by default but I've enabled it on here and I'm going to explain what that scan to home uh, is in another video and uh, now I'm going to close right out of there and just to prove now that now we're back to the authentication screen uh, and this is my this is Peter's new card I can simply just hold that across there and we're, ne we're now logged in as Peter. One way of confirming that is just to look at the, the scan to me or scan to home and you can notice at the top there that email address is the same one as I just entered for that particular user before. So uh, that's it. Logging out. Hit the access button again and that's it. That's a quick introduction to how to set up and configure the uh, user authentication. It's all built into the machine and I uh, hope you liked it.